we have a lot of catching up to do, I think. Um, so recently, or at least this year, we lost Daniel Dennett, philosopher yes. Daniel Dennett. I recently learned, I didn't read all of his books, I read some of them. Uh, he declared that Darwin's evolution by natural selection was the greatest idea anybody ever had. He's coming to it not as a biologist, but as a philosopher. So how do you reflect on that declaration? He said that at the beginning of his book, uh, Darwin's Dangerous Idea, and his point was that uh, before Darwin came along, it seemed obvious to everyone that big complicated things like humans and oak trees and things had to have a, an, an explanation in terms of design. And it was a huge stroke of insight for Darwin to see that it didn't, that the laws of physics alone could produce this prodigious amount of complexity filtered through this odd process of natural selection. To me, it's always been strange that it took so long, that it took until the middle of the 19th century for Darwin and Wallace, and even maybe one or two other people. This is thousands of years of thought. Of, yes, and, and brilliant but, people have come before. Aristotle could have could have had it and didn't. I mean, when you think how much cleverer you had to be to do what Newton did, uh, or, or Leibniz, um, inventing calculus, um, working out about the laws of how 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 gravity. The, the, the Newton finger puppet here. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, you'd think that somebody would have t tumbled to evolution by natural selection before the middle of the 19th century, yet they didn't. And so that's an astonishing thing, and it needs an explanation. Did Daniel Dennett explain why it took that long? Or, and if he didn't, what would be your explanation? I don't remember whether he did. Um, well, first of all, Ernst Meyer, the great, I mean, he was here, I think. Here at the American Museum of Natural yeah. History. Uh, he thought it was because of essentialism. He thought that, that because of Aristotle and Plato, who thought that just because they thought like geometers. I mean, you know, a, a right angle triangle is a kind of perfect form sort of hanging out there. And they thought that the perfect rabbit, the perfect rhinoceros was hanging out there just, just like a right angle triangle. So you couldn't imagine how a rabbit could turn into anything different. That, that was his explanation. That wouldn't be mine. I mean, I, I, think, I think it's just that. Uh, that's an interesting one, though, because it, it speaks to the bias that we have observing nature. I mean, even in my field. So my people including Copernicus, could not shake the idea of orbits that were per perfect circles. They couldn't shake that. Why would God design a universe with a shape that wasn't geometrically perfect? So even Copernicus putting the sun back in the middle of the known universe had circular orbits. And since the orbits are not circles, they actually differed from predictions on the night sky. So... That was a problem at the time. It's like Copernicus, this might work, but it still doesn't fit. The epicycles are doing much better. And so, so it wasn't instantly taken up, it's including the resistance, the church resistance, of course. Of course, yes. Earth, yes. Earth wasn't in the middle yeah. anymore. Why it took so long and the idea of the perfect rabbit, the perfect rhinoceros, the perfect horse. Um, in a way, that's a bit silly because if you want to look at them, I mean, a population of rabbits is, is pretty variable. And um, anyway, that, that was Ernst Meyer's explanation for why it took so long. Um, Darwin did it by going via artificial selection. Um, everybody knew, farmers knew, horticulturalists knew, gardeners knew, that you could change a rose, you could change a cabbage uh, by just breeding. And really Darwin's insight was to say you don't actually need a breeder. You don't need, need a human to do the breeding. Nature does it for you. Survival does it for you. It's not that difficult. I mean, it doesn't require any sort of higher mathematics or anything. And yet so, nobody got it until Darwin and Wallace. And this is why I'm intrigued that Daniel Dennett, a philosopher who, in principle, any philosopher could have come up with this, because unlike relativity and unlike quantum physics, which are realms of behavior of the universe, large and small, that you can't just deduce from your armchair, but evolution by natural selection could have been deduced in an armchair, yeah, it I just wasn't. It could, it, 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 it's surprising that it did, didn't. Um, it's interesting that both Darwin and Wallace were traveling naturalists, and they both were collectors uh, in South America, both were in South America. Wallace lost his entire South American collection in a fire. Ooh. Um, 
and then he went to the Far East. But, but they were both collectors of natural history specimens. 